been an hour since I was so stuck, so I'm now done, and I'm going to take out my needles. As you can see, they're exactly where I left them. And I am going to slowly... See, normally you can use band-aids, but today I am using a 4x4, which I can fold up and take a tiny little... 2x2, two two, my bad. Into a little square. And I have a little piece of tape that I'm going to use as a makeshift band-aid. And you want to take these out one by one. You don't want to take them. You don't want to like take them out one by one. I mean, but at the same time, and you just want to pull back the tape slowly. Which will be easy to out. Sometimes there, some of the fluid will come back out, so you just want to have the band aid or something ready. But it looks fine today. And then I just take my little piece of tape. I just stick it over. And then I move on to the next one. Now I'm going to pull it out. And then once I get done, before I throw them away, what I do is. What I do before I um take when I, before I throw them away is I'll is I fold them and then I turn them in and I use the tape and I wrap it up. I need a coin. I need a coin. And you take out the thing. It will be to let you know that you have taken the cartridge out, and then you take out a needle. You throw this. You take the needles off, and you throw them away in the sharp box, and then you throw your cartridge away in the trash can. In the trash can, and then you just put your pump. Your battery is good enough for maybe a long time. You can use your battery over and over again, so you don't have to use a new battery every single time you do it. And then you just put the stuff away, and then you're done. I am doing my sub cube for the week. I do this every week and I do 8 grams or 40 milliliters of immune gobble. Has it dropped? And what, these are the little bottles. What you're going to do before you get the bottle is you want to check. The date to make sure it's still good. Like this one's May 21st of 2014, so I know it's still good. You, if you get like a large shipment of them, you want to make sure you use the ones that are gonna expire the soonest. So that way, you can go and get them out of the way, and you don't have to worry about them using accidentally using expired medicine. So I have little pop little caps, and then I have this little s spike. You want to make sure you wash your hands before doing all this. And then you want to make sure everything stays like sterile in your little packages before you open them and use them. So I have this little spike which I put on it. And then I have my syringe. Which the little spike allows me to be able to get the medicine out of the container without having to take the complete cap off. The little air in it. Me screw it on. Turn it upside down, you push the air in so that way it builds pressure, and then you pull. And you watch it. And then you take the spike, and you pop the cap box. And you stick the cap in a second, and push it. And pull out the box. You want to try to get as little air bubbles as possible, but it's okay if you get some. And then you take this off. And you want to try to keep the tip from touching anything so that way it stays clean. And you take your little cartridge. And you take 
the ending of the cartridge. Take the little cap off. And you want to make sure this doesn't touch anything either so it can stay clean. And you screw it on there. And then you put, you push the medicine into the cartridge. It takes a little pressure through. But I'm 17 and I've been doing this. I first started doing IVs when I was two and then I started doing this about maybe seven years ago. Then I started sticking myself about for a while we started doing it at home and then my parents would do it and then finally I learned how to do it and so now I do it every week. I prefer to do it during the weekend that way it doesn't interfere with school and it helps and it helps a lot to do it on the weekends because then you can have like you can be active while you're doing it and all that. And you want to pull out some of the air. Use the air to push the rest of the medicine in. And once you've got all the medicine in, you want to shake it and get all the air out. All the little air bubbles. But it's okay if you have a couple of air bubbles in it. They're not going to hurt you. But I have some medicine left in there, so I'm going to have to push it back in. And then I will wipe it. Once I'm painted, I'm just going to leave it on so that way it can stay clean. Then I'm going to open up my connector. To open my connector. And I'm going to attach. I'm going to unscrew this. Just that side. Keep down the ear so that nothing touches it. And I'll take that side. And I'll just screw it in there. And then I will open my needles. And then just lay them on top, and then I will take that in. Hold it up so nothing touches it. And I will take this in. And I'll make sure they're secure so that way nothing can leak out during the infusion. And then I, I pull some of the needles out so that way whenever I prime it, it has it won't the medicine won't leak onto the rest of the tubing and the tubing all sticky. And then I hook my cartridge. I use the little cap, but you can use a penny, preferably a coin, because it's easier to do that. Do you just screw it on with a cap? And then, and then I take my battery, and it makes a little peeping noise when it turns on. And I wait for it to go through its routinely wake up oh, see and it shows me all the things like it shows me the data make sure it's right now the black screen is turning on but it says good evening and little beeps and it tells me that I don't have an air detector attached it tells me my reservoir volume my continuous rate my millimeter, my milliliters that I've been given, and it keeps going through on it with you, and it's telling me the date and time, and it's telling me I've been reminder, and it says self test complete, and it says for the bar latched, and it says my power up is successful. So then I will type, I will press next, and I will enter in my reservoir volume, which is 40 milliliters. So I keep scrolling until I get 40. When I hit enter, and it enters it. And then it tells me, I can, and then I have to check my continuous rate to make sure it's correct, which it is, which is 40 milliliters an hour, which means I'll be, it'll only be one hour for this whole entire thing to go through. And then I hit next. And then it tells me how many milliliters I've been given since I turned, like, and then it tells me back at the beginning. And then I hit options, and I'll hit the first option is prime, which I hit enter. And then you make sure you unclamp this or else it'll tell you high pressure. And then you, what I like to do is I like to tilt it so that way if, if my primes, any of the air bubbles that are still left in there, it will go 
the top and go through it. Then I hit Y and I wait for it to prime, which it, which means the medicine will go all the way through. So that way there's no air left in the tubes, which means once I stick, there won't be any air going into my stomach or tissue. Or, and it will only be medicine. Right now it's right there, which means it still has to go through all these little loopies. Those are my, those are my needles. They're, they're six, they're six millimeters, which means they're kind of short, which means there are bigger needles out there, I can show you. And there it is, it's primed, so. That is just being a pain, but this is, I'll admit this is my first time doing it without Imla. Normally I use Imla, which helps soften the skin. And you can use Imla, it helps, like, it deadens the skin so that way you don't feel the needles go in. But this is my first time doing it without Imla, which I ran out of Imla, so it's kind of scary. Oh. I use tape, you can just use Tegonerbs, but I use tape because it helps secure it because whenever I had the Tegonerbs, the needles still kept, like, they would raise up and then it would leak everywhere, like, it would come out. So I use tape and it helps secure them more securely. And I just put my tape right there. I just get maybe, I get maybe like four little pieces and I do little X's on my needles. And then, and then I take the needle. These are little butterfly needles, which I call them butterflies because they look like little butterflies. But the easiest way to um, stick with your, like stick yourself instead of like instead of just leaving them like that, what you can do is you take the little wings and you fold them back, and that way it just creates like, and that way whenever and you want to make sure your needles lined up for one. But that way whenever you take the cap off the needle, the needle is the only thing sticking up. So that way it makes and plus it's easier when you're pushing in because then you have something to hold on to while you're pushing in, you're not just pressing flat. You want to keep one inch for the belly button. I don't know what it is. It's not even the fucking belly button. Yeah, that's true. You can either grab the skin like this, or I stretch it out for some reason. I don't know why, but... I got one needle in. It mainly hurts maybe like a mosquito bite, but I haven't done it in a while, so a very sharp mosquito bite. But I mean it's not that bad. It's just like a two second sting and then it's over with. You want to have your tegonerms ready so that way once you um, get done with your needles and you can go ahead and put the tegonerms on and make sure the needles are secure and they won't come out and you won't have to re stick yourself.
Okay, it's the second needle. radio so it's telling me I'm picking too long. You have your needle secure and you make sure your tegonerm is completely down. And then you just and then you can just pick up your pump and start it and you can go along your way. You can go jog a mile, you can go you can do anything you want with this thing really. Yeah, you can walk your dog, which I'm probably about to do. And I can't, it's starting. It's going through, it's telling me everything again to so make sure it be good. And make sure, this is just a note, make sure you definitely prime it before you stick it. Because I have on multiple occasions stuck myself and forgotten prime and I had to retake my needles out and re-stick myself. So make sure you prime yourself. <laughs> 